The Biopsy Playhouse has been rated TV PG. Parental guidance suggested. Welcome to Globico Satellite Worldwide. For programming, please press enter on your remote. Coming soon from Globico International Pictures and Psychotrope Productions, a story rooted in the past, yet ripped from tomorrow's headlines. General Killam here. Who's missing? And you better be on a secure line, mister. Some never believed it existed in the first place. Some thought the world was better off without it, but now the fate of the whole world rested on its swift recovery. Ah, uh, yes, sir. I'll get right on it, sir. Right, bye. Kill him here. This is a code red priority. The pumpkin has gone missing. I repeat, the pumpkin has gone missing. What do you mean, so what? There's a war going on, man! 48 hours, and you know what to do. <sharp inhale> Yale graduates! <sighs> Team Alpha's got 48 hours. The fate of the world hangs in the balance. Don't miss! The president's brain is missing! See it before it's too late. <laughs> on a sultry, steamy, steamy August, August night, night. The dog, the dog from, from Son, Son of Sam, Sam repute, repute met, met with Cujo. Cujo. The, attraction the attraction was immediate. immediate. They ran, ran to the nearest, the nearest fire hydrant, and, and with reckless abandon consummated their, their impetuous relationship. relationship. Their, their offspring, offspring Sam Joe. Joe. <laughs> Jesus, it's hot out here. Name's Sam Joe, how you doing? Hey, if God is opposite the pro, then is it Congress opposite the progress? <laughs> Gotta go pee, see you later. Oh, but I love being a dog. I think it's just great walking around on all fours and going up and sniffing a butt whenever you want. Oh, yes, oh. I love you as a dog. Oh, look at that. I love those guys. Unfortunately, your sister wants you back, so... Oh. At the dawn of a new millennium, a man of the cloth is in crisis. The comfort that his faith once afforded him lies shattered at his feet like a fragile glass figurine. Its exquisite beauty now a cold memory on the harsh pavement of reality. Stupid, Stupid senseless rules. Thou suck. suck. No, no money, money, no babes. Not, not even, even supposed to masturbate. masturbate. It's the bottom of the ninth inning of the soul, and the coach says it's time to throw him a screwball, son. Will the congregation please rise for another sermon from the tattered testament of the Obsessional Confession? Suck being, being poor. poor. Only, Only there was, was some, some way to make some, some money, money off this lame gig. gig. Ah, hell, hell, here comes the first, first loser. loser. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been ten past, I mean days, since my last confession. And I've started gambling again. Gambling? Well, how deep a pit have you dug for yourself, man? How much have you lost? Father, that's it. I'm not losing. I'm winning. You see, down at the restaurant where, where I wash dishes, some of the guys taught me this game, that they call it craps. And it's like God has come down and touched my hands. Every pass, a winner. All I do is win, win, win. But, but the guilt is horrible. Father, what do I do? Oh, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Lord. I'll never forget you for this one. I ask you humbly for a pigeon, and you send me a fat turkey with all the trimmings. Have whatever I pull in, and it's gonna be a bundle. I'll put in the poor box for you, Lord. You and me, Lord, all the way, all the time. I'll have to play this one real careful. <clears throat> uh, even though gambling's wrong, I advise you to keep gambling and hand over your winnings to me so I can give it to the Overseas Missions Fund. So only you, me, and the Lord need to know anything. See you next week. Yes, Father, next week. And the week after that, I'm gonna keep coming to you till I feel clean. But it could take a very long time. 
Oh, let's hope so. Papa needs a new pair of everything. We're in the money. We're in the money. I think I finally figured how to make this pay. here in Yankee territory again, stuck in traffic. Damn, there always seems to be traffic. You ever notice that? Oh. Well, what I wanted to talk to you guys today about was this war in Iraq. As far as I am concerned, this war is not legal under the Constitution. I have not heard of anyone in this administration going to the Congress and asking them if they could go to war. Now, as you know, I belong to this organization dedicated to the Constitution and the true United States. We do not see where the Zionist fascist government has the right to invade the sovereign borders of another country, no matter who is in charge. Damn Yankee, get out of the way! Daddy, where is the tip of the iceberg? That's your mother's forehead. Welcome to Wendy, your Cosmic Astrologer, with your host, Wendy Burblestein. Hi, I'm Wendy, your Cosmic Astrologer. This month's sign is Taurus, the sign of the bull. And boy, does it smell like it. What's the matter with you, people? This month, I have a letter from Cheryl from Greenvale, New York. Cheryl writes me, Dear Wendy, my husband is having an affair with his secretary. What should I do? Wait a minute. Cheryl from Greenvale? I go to Jimboree with you. Well, here's my advice. Why don't you have a wild orgy with your pool man, your landscaper, your mailman, and whoever you can find? Let your husband walk in on you. That'll teach him to screw around with the secretary. What's the matter with you, Cheryl? You've been watching Wendy, your cosmic astrologer, where your future is always dealt the wrong hand. anybody right now without reason and keep him in jail against his will and not provide him with a legal representation? For all I know, me phone could be getting bugged right now, or me email could be getting read by some paranoid puppet just looking for an imaginary terrorist. Oh, but don't you see? That's just for the terrorists! If you're a loyal American, you've got nothing to be afraid of! Okay, okay, next, next! your arms. Ah, very good, very good. Code Red, we got somebody. We need a full body cavity search immediately, immediately. What? Sir, well, wait a minute. Please, wait, please. Please. Sir, I'm a please. veteran. I Sir. served the Desert Storm. They're one of the good ones. Ah, you can go. Irving? Yeah! Oh, 
All right, Irvin. Now that you're back. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Listen up here. Now that you're back, we're going to get some ground rules set. No get-rich-quick schemes. Oh, could you stop her with that? Okay? No professions. No jobs. You're going to sit here on the couch. You're going to watch these guys. We're going to drink beer. And that is it. Do you understand me? I love you, sir. Oh, get away from me, Irving. No, but I really love you, Sid. Do you think we have any chance? Something seems wrong and oh, so twisted. Hi, I'm Rod Derrick, president of Global Coal Oil. The lines have been drawn in the sand against this nasty beast of terrorism. We need the people over there to feel our support. And some people are thinking about driving less or even carpooling. How gauche. We need to drive. We need to max out the efficiency of the petroleum industry to bring up the level of our petroleum being pushed out. That's why I strongly urge you, I beseech you, on the name of anything sacred and American in this world, you go out and drive. If you have to get the mail, Take your car from the drive garage to the mailbox. That's a long ride. You want to go out for that big slurp, whatever? Go around town, that's great. If you want to drive to freaking Baghdad, that's fine. Just drive to success. Keep America healthy and happy. Mr. Derek, your limo's here. Gets three miles a gallon. Oh, no, Mrs. Lincoln, did you enjoy that play? Where's a fire hydrant when you need it? My mother's a real bitch, I'll tell you that. Daddy, can I ask you a question? You just did. Hi, me, Merle. Well, I'd like to tell you a story that my grandpappy's pappy used to tell. You see, it takes place just at the end of the Great War between the states. You know, when our boys had to stop defending their farms. Well, it seems these greenhorn gentlemen, they called them carpetbaggers, came down to the south. They called themselves liberators. They bring the people food and water. But you know, we have plenty of food and we have plenty of water before they started bombing off farms. Well, you see, that's why I don't trust them politicians, especially them northern politicians. Hey, look, there's one now. And now, the Estrogen Channel presents a man in touch with his feminine side, Dr. Dill. Hosted by Dr. Dill, a noted relationship therapist. Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Dill. Today's topic will be men. Are they kidding or what? What do they really want? Do they know or don't they care? We have selected a few members from our audience here to bear their griefs. Our first one is Miss Carla Bovine. Miss Carla, what's your problem? Yes, thanks, Dr. Dill. Whenever I talk to a guy, they never look me in the eye. They're always staring at my chest. It makes me feel so, so, so cheap. Well, you do have a nice rack there. Maybe if you want to stop feeling cheap, you should charge those free folks to look at those mountains. Our next one is Miss Lynn McGillicuddy. She's a executive secretary from Global Coal Corporation. Lynn, what's your beef? I have trouble with men at work. They never take me seriously. It really pisses me off. Well, maybe you should start serving them coffee while you're topless. <laughs> Face it, ladies. Donnie Hughes has been dead for years. We can eat red meat again, and we got to get over it. <laughs> Our third guest is a housewife from Hogwaller, Arkansas, Miss Blanche Cartwright. 
What's on your alleged mind besides a lovely hair weave, Blanche? Excuse me? Men can remember the baseball scores from the last 30 years. They can't remember to put the toilet seat down. You can't remember to take out the trash. I mean, come on, and after sex? I mean, after they have their orgasm, they just roll over and go to sleep? What about our needs? Coming this fall oh. on BSN. Mad Dingo, a Rabbi Shlomo Mendelbaum production in association with the Animal Channel presents The Forbidden Love Between a Woman and Man's Best Friend. See Passion. See Romance. See the tender moments that only a woman and her dog can know. Man Dingo. Coming this fall on PSN. You'll never look at your dog the same again. Uh, a snuggle. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, you're right. Anytime I go out with a guy, they just want sex. Like Pogo. P-O-O-G-O. Put out or get out. Oh, and they don't talk. Oh, unless you consider grunting during sex a form of communication. That's, That's so true. Know. You know, when I propose an idea at a business meeting, the men all mumble under their breath. Oh, no it all, pushy bitch. But you know, when they come up with an idea, it's all, oh, he's a hungry go-getter company man. I'll bet that makes you want to do to them. What's the point? It's going to make them brain dead. That's right. They're, they're brain dead, dead already. already. So I mean, all oh, assholes. I hate them. I'm gonna slit their throat. You know what? This guy seems like he just wants to mock us and make fun of all our opinions. I think we should get him. I agree. Let's get him! Let's go! Let's get him! Dale, yeah, get over here! Get down on the floor! Oh. Oh. And the next, Dr. Gill, guys that talk to each other. And now a word from our sponsor, some sanitary napkin thing. That's one who does it twice each year. <laughs> and now, the Reverend Billy Bob Turgid and his message from God. And now, the Reverend. Praise be, people! My, that was an inspirational hymn. Well, you know what inspires me? Doing God's great work. And now it's so easy. Thanks to George W. Bush's faith-based initiatives, you can step up to big pay and a rewarding career by bringing your flock closer to God. And now it's easier than ever with the Reverend Billy Bob Turgid's School of Divinity. We pick up where the good book left off. You'll learn how to turn this to this. Sweet, huh? It's one of my new churches. Through a few savvy real estate moves and a few of those holy tax-free grants, it's got 45 rooms, 12 baths, and an Olympic-sized baptismal pool. It's in the good book. You can look it up if you want to. In my father's house, there are many mansions, but none finer than this one. But why listen to me? Why listen to the good book? Why don't you listen to my good friend, the Rabbi Shlomo Mendelbaum? Tell him all about it, Shlomi. Oh, toda, Billy Bob. Oh, boy, chick, thank you. <laughs> Isn't he terrific? <laughs> Don't you love my new floating shoe? The SS Mitzvah. Oh, it is terrific. We have full religious instructions and we have a continental glad kosher dining room. Oh, don't you just love it? Oh, oh that's my wife, Sarah. She's in a painting. That's it. Oh, gotta go. Good luck. Good luck. Now, who could argue with that? It's just that simple. Christian, Jew, we accept all denominations, especially fives, tens, twenties, and fifties, and hundreds. Dial the number on your screen now. 
the Reverend Billy Bob Turgid School of Divinity. Dial that number now, right now. It's like dialing God Cash. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Bud Mudd. As the desert sands in Iraq keep piling up in what I would like to call Desert Storm the sequel, oodles of information are now being poured down on the American public in what could possibly be the largest reported war in history. Sadly, folks, this is not true. I would like to go now to our roving reporter, Ned Sterner, somewhere in Iraq. Ned? Thank you, bud. I'm here in Iraq, somewhere south of Baghdad. They call me an embedded journalist, and oh boy am I. I've been attached with a detachment of Florida National Guard known as Jabs Jesters. Well, the boys and I got a hold of a little illicit desert hooch last night with, as you can see, these hilarious results. Hey, Ned. I knew all those stories you did about those hanging chads back in the election would come back to haunt you. <laughs> hey, bud! Somebody? Anybody? Uh, hey, Ned. Sleep tight. Don't let the sandworms bite. <laughs> this has been Bud Mud. Good night, America. <laughs> You're wondering what I'm doing here in the middle of the desert. Well, my cousin W, he's saying that the war ain't going so well. So he wanted me to grab my weekend to here and help the boys out. Wanted Hedford to come, but got Grandpa Doc. How you doing there, Grandpa Doc? Hey, Grandpa, I think I got a beat on something. Boy! Boy! That tank's got a British flag! Aren't we allies? Well, I guess not anymore! Oh, Michael Jackson, you never trust a guy who sings Beat It while wearing one glove. I just do it on the French Poodle. <laughs> Hello, Office of Fatherland and Security. Open viewer, uh, Director Tom Ridge speaking. I've got some information regarding a terrorist cell operating in New York City. We have got to get permission to get some preemptive wiretaps so we can find out where they're going to strike next. They have cells operating in every major city. They have been at it since 2001. Hmm, I see. That sounds serious. Would you please hold on a minute? Flash! Condition red. This is not a drill. Condition red. Break out the plastic rack, duct tape, and get the ho-hos too, by the way. This is condition red. I repeat, this is not a drill. Over. Please go on. Like I said, they have been at it since 2001. They are slowly poisoning our air and our water. Yeah, now they've targeted the wildlife areas and the parks. Tourists will be sitting ducks. And now they are going after the economy. That's right. They will drive us to complete ruin if we let them. <sighs> Listen, I have an inside tip that they are slowly going to take over New York City next year. They are actually going to come out from underground. That's right, they feel that they will be unstoppable by then. Please, we have got to get some wiretaps so we can blow the lid off this whole thing. Please, Mr. Ridge, you have got to get us some wiretaps. We can just expose them for what they are and stop them for good. Oh, sure, you'll have everything you need. I'll have my best operatives bring over the paper to work to you right away. Just tell me a few things so I can brief my staff. Do these bastards have a name? They go by two names. 
One's the political wing, and one does the actual dirty work. <laughs> the code name for the leader is W. The first name is Republican, and the second name is GOP. Cancel red alert, damn prank calls. I'm getting too old for this shit. Daddy, what's a virgin? That's an ugly third grader. <laughs> Shut up, Irving. I'll poo on you. <laughs> Shut up, Irving. Oh, your eyes glisten so when you get so angry. <laughs> Irving, you feel lucky? What a B I T C H. Ha 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 